When someone's raised by a narcissistic parent, in particular a covert narcissistic parent, there are things that that child is being set up for where later in life they are sort of primed or groomed for relationships that are similar to the one that they had with their parents to being with toxic people. So let's talk about that and let's talk about some of the traits of covert narcissistic parents and how it affects the child and then the future adult. My name is Lisa Colucci and I'm here to help you understand and heal from toxic relationships. If you haven't done so, hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe. Okay, so let's talk about some of the traits of a covert narcissistic parent. So covert narcissism in particular is a more hidden type of narcissism. The person still lacks the empathy, the person still lacks the accountability, and they're still manipulating others for their own gain and to have things go their way. So the difference is it's not overt, it's not on the outside, it's not expressed in big, bold ways. It's subtle, it's sneaky, it's almost to the point where it's hard to define. It can be where you, even as an adult, knowing a whole lot about narcissism, can't quite define if your parent was a narcissist. All you know is they felt like they were gaslighting you or that they were toxic to you and all of that. So, so one major thing, that happens is a covert narcissistic parent will make themselves important. They will use social norms and social and societal norms, such as parents should be important to make themselves important instead of simply being important because they're an important person in, in a child's life. Basically what that looks like is this hidden toxic trait of sort of a mama or daddy knows best mentality when really what's happening is what's being done that is supposed to be in the child's best interest serves the toxic person or serves the narrative that the toxic person is more important than anyone else right so and and that that child isn't being taught autonomy and that child isn't being taught and given skills to be their own person but they are having to look at mother or father as the only one who has the answers, the only one that knows, the, the one that can dictate how, how that child feels. Okay, so super toxic because it isn't allowing for any individuation. And even in little children, it makes the child's world so they question everything that comes from the outside through the filter of what that toxic parent thinks. Instead of a healthy relationship with a child where the child learns and forms their own opinions and also filters in the family culture in a healthier way, children usually will filter their world through what their parents think. That's kind of normal, right, for kids. But the difference is in a non-toxic household, that's a healthy trusting thing. In a toxic household, the toxic person is filtering everything through their delusion that they are the most important thing and everything is their way. And it isn't from morality or understanding or compassion or anything like that. It's simply from a narcissistic viewpoint. Another thing a toxic covert narcissistic parent will do is basically virtue lie. They will tout their virtues and present themselves as the perfect parent with a list of reasons why. Things like they're always there for you. Well, yeah, they're always there for you because they're controlling you, right? So they're doing normal things. In a covert narcissistic parent isn't doing the obvious abandonment type of things. They're doing the normal things usually that, that parents do when they're being good parents, only they're doing them with the intent for themselves to get supply, for themselves to get control, for themselves. They may be helpful. They may cook meals for friends or bake cookies. They may offer advice. They may be doing things that look like they're a kind person. And then they flip and they say things like, well, after all I've done for you, well, look at all the things I do for you. I do these things and no one appreciates me, but it's because they're doing these things for the supply and appreciation and acknowledgement. So this virtue lie that this parent has all these virtues and that they're doing them for altruistic measures, which we know they're not, right? You know what I'm talking about if you've experienced this, where the parent is giving and then they're taking away at the same time. It's the creation of cognitive dissonance in the child. And then that child grows up 
and has complete confusion when people are doing nice things for them and they can't tell the difference between what is a virtue and what is a lie and they trust that the parent is a good person but then they do these bad things so it clearly must be you right it can't be them because they do all these good things they are such virtuous people well that kind of cognitive dissonance can be brought into future relationships in adult relationships obviously because it makes it hard to have the right sort of gauge when you are meeting new people you can't tell the difference so the covert narcissistic parent will play the victim poor them right everyone's always whatever to them they are the victim they use guilt and shame to drive this into their children's minds they will guilt and shame their kids until that child takes it on themselves to be responsible for that adult parent's emotional life for that adult parent's self-esteem and well-being because what they're doing is pulling supply from the child this victim playing thing that the covert narcissistic parent does it sets that child up for a future of always taking care of everybody else's emotions through guilt and shame feeling guilt and shame for themselves about who they are if they're not constantly caretaking it creates a codependency and it creates people pleasing in the child which does not help in future adult relationships right so you can see where these things are coming from and how if you've had this happen to you you can kind of work to unwind these things because these are all contrivances that are placed into your head this is indoctrination by a toxic person in your upbringing that has created beliefs and thoughts and what even becomes feelings about oneself and about the world in you that now you have to undo okay and you got to relearn that all of this was toxic and you want to be way over there in the land of not toxic they can look really good compared to how bad it can really get oh yeah they can even say things like well you know there's starving people over there or some people's parents do this they i have heard of some that point out news stories and and things they hear that are so tragic and so horrible about things that parents do do in order to make themselves look like a stellar amazing shining superstar of a parent yeah that's more cognitive dissonance isn't it that it creates in the child because you're like well it wasn't that bad my childhood was not that bad right if you've had a covert narcissistic parent it's white picket fence sometimes right it's the perfect life the perfect family so to speak on the outside on the inside it's subtle manipulation and subtle toxic traits that are happening to you from this toxic person okay so let's keep going so you know narcissists can have this spiteful raging hateful side of them right we know this okay with the covert narcissistic parent it's often gonna look subtle and like more of a passive aggressiveness they may have little jabs have a running joke have a have a slip of the tongue or a slip of the tongue in humor that is directed at you even when you say i don't like that kind of humor and they keep going they may have slip of the tongue insults too or oversights or anything that is it's shaming again shaming these are all passive aggressive ways to let them dump their inner hatred rage and anger onto you and it's really not about you this is bullying this is subtle bullying it's not safe children who grow up in these households with toxic covert narcissistic parents often have a very huge sense of not feeling safe not feeling heard not feeling seen not feeling safe right and that is because things like this because the person who is on one side so virtuous and so giving and does all these amazing things on the other hand seems to not really like you that much that is basically like the death by a thousand cuts is how i've had people describe it to me um, and how i have experienced it where it is tiny tiny things right that build up into where you lose your self-esteem you lose if you you know you never are taught to have one one more thing i'm going to talk about is their half-truths 
and plausible deniability that covert narcissists love so much to use as a form of gaslighting. They will often leave out giant portions of stories and talk about one section of a story as if it's the whole story and turn that into a narrative that you're being spoon fed and those around you are being told. And oftentimes, if you're a person like myself, where you see the big picture and you tend to be observant of what's going on with human interaction, and you're a child and you see this, and you're like, wait, that's not how it was. That's only a piece of the story. Wait, wait, you can't trust. You learn that you can't trust anyone because this is how people are, right? People lie and they tell partial truths in order to make themselves look good, seem good, seem better that it's embarrassing to be who you are. You can only tell half truths because if you tell the whole truth, no one would like you, right? Like that's, these are the types of things that you're taught. They also use dismissal in this realm and use minimizing and the gaslighting, right? To cover up their tracks, to get things their way. It's what it usually is about getting things their way and getting the attention on them and being the center of the family cult that they are creating. Okay, so if you have any questions or experience with covert narcissistic parents, let me know in the comments. Let's talk more about this and let me know how it's affected you or anything you wanna talk about about it. So if you need coaching, group coaching or anything like that, you can also find information in the description of every video. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Take care, bye-bye.